Well, we're joined now by Clayton Baumgarth, who's been working on a story about the price of turkeys this Thanksgiving. Welcome to the show, Clayton. Thanks for having me, Joe. So I assume with inflation, you're going to tell us that turkeys are probably more expensive this year. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, you'll definitely be paying more, but there's a lot of factors driving up the cost this year, including an avian flu that wiped out some flocks. I spoke with a turkey farmer and poultry experts about what's driving prices up this year. Here's what they had to say. Things are more quiet than usual this time of year at Gunthorpe Farms in LaGrange, Indiana. We raised all of our turkeys in the summer, uh, so the only turkeys that we have on the farm right now are um, frozen. This 275-acre farm on the border of Michigan has been in his family for four generations. For the last 14 years, they've been raising two batches of turkeys in the summer, as well as another batch in the fall to prepare for the holiday rush. This year, things are different. It's really, really difficult uh, to staff a um, processing plant. Um, you know, it was difficult before COVID. It's been insanely difficult to, um, for us to um, staff our processing plant. For the turkeys he did raise this year, a major pressure point was the avian flu. Around 47.7 million birds have been affected nationwide. About 7 million of those are turkeys, including around half a million in Indiana alone. Thankfully for Greg, they also have grass-fed lambs and pigs to keep the operation running. The virus spreads like any other strains typically do, via migratory waterfowl that pick up the disease and spread it through their droppings as they fly north for the spring. What makes this strain different, though, is its longevity. This year, however, we've been seeing another surge happening in the fall with the migration that happens when they're going south. So we're seeing that all over again. While flocks across the nation have been heavily affected, Indiana has managed to fare well. We've had a number of cases in Indiana. Um, we've not had any new diagnosis since the first week of September. So currently we're in good shape. Slightly less than 500,000 birds had been infected in a state that typically produces 20 million turkeys a year. While infection rates have been low in the state, the impact can be detrimental to those affected. So when you look at the numbers, it doesn't look significant. But when it is your farm, it is the world. If a highly pathogenic disease like this gets into a flock's barn, farmers would most likely have to cull their entire flock. Thankfully, strong partnerships between the Poultry Association, Board of Animal Health, and USDA can help keep these events from destroying the livelihoods of farmers, up to a certain percentage of their flock's value. They get, and we call those indemnity funds, so they get those payments, and then they also get support in helping um, to, to clean and disinfect their barns. Um, and manage any materials that are generated from that whole response. The avian flu isn't the only cause of higher than average turkey prices. There's a lot at play as the nation heads into the holidays this year. The average 16 pound turkey is already more expensive, even before the holiday rush. We've seen these hitting record prices. We've seen a national regional average of around 182 per pound. And this is around 30% higher than what we saw in 2021. Barrett also told me that more specialized items like boneless, skinless turkey breasts are up 112% over last year. Part of that jump is due to the scarcity from the flu and the other is inflation, but even that's not all. And so when we look at that and you add those two factors in, plus the high demands that we've seen on our food systems post COVID, things like packaging supplies, shipping issues, things of that nature. Rising costs like gas for equipment, Fertilizer for feed and more are also factors that have to be accounted for when determining the final consumer price on agricultural goods. We see the cost of production going up. Uh, we see that cost needed you know, by, the, by the producer from the wholesaler. We see those prices go up and further on to the retailer. Nelson thinks there's a small light at the end of the tunnel on the cost of poultry products. If we continue to see these levels slow down, we would give some of the poultry industry overall a chance to rebuild a little bit. And as we are able to rebuild those stocks, I think consumers would see some relief on the price points a little bit. All of these things, the flu, inflation, input costs, and navigating a post-COVID market have combined to get us where we are today. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Clayton Baumgarth. While you shouldn't see a shortage of turkeys this year, you should be prepared to pay a bit extra for your holiday bird. All right, Clayton, thank you very much.